Church family, we want to welcome you. And if you're a first time guest here, we especially want to welcome you. Say welcome to Sand Life Church. We're so glad you're here. Uh, church, would you join me in welcome to first time guest? Lord, if you came in here, you'll be greeted with a warm smile. And you'll receive a connect guide. If you want to, if you want to fill out any part of that house service, or you can do the way to sign up, connect, uh, have more questions, we encourage you to do that. Well, church, now we're going to move and we're going to welcome each other. Let's turn to each other and let the people know that you're glad to see them. Let's welcome each other.
I pray that today as we receive your word, that we would open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to be changed by your truth. And uh, that we would set aside all the distractions. Uh, I pray that your name would be glorified in us, in your word.
And God used this regular dude in a regular setting for the most irregular thing that ever happened. The, the, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ left the Jews and entered into the world of the Gentiles. Every single one of your Christian faith faiths chases its lineage back to that moment. When Peter and Cornelius engaged one another and the gospel took a leap and then it just spread. You see, guys, this is an irregular thing that happened in a regular prayer time. And so what I want to challenge you to do that. I'm going to be fasting. I know there's other people in our church who are going to be fasting and praying and seeking God in the Word. But I want to challenge you for 40 days because I really believe this is just the beginning of what God wants to do. Listen, man, we went to two services We've had AC problems. We've had rain off and on. You don't think that the enemy is kicking it? This church has got relationship issues. This church has got financial issues. And I only believe that it's true. This church has pastor issues. Because I believe that this church is on the brink of seeing God do something in this community like it's never been done before. An irregular thing. And I believe that it gets its birth in the fact that we have been willing to seek Him over the past years and willing to look to Him and to follow Him and to make Him about what we're about. And God has been doing things and the enemy is kicking it against us and He wants to destroy what God's doing. And I believe this with all my heart. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you are really honest and really just, you don't have to raise your hand, but just say, you know what, I'm not much on prayer. Prayer hasn't been one of my, my high points. I, I, my prayer life, in other words, could use a tremendous boost. It could use a kick in the pants, you might say. Uh, my prayer life, is, you know, I've struggled with being a, a prayer warrior my whole life, my whole Christian life. When I became a believer, it was on a Sunday. That Tuesday, I was door knocking, knocking on doors, sharing the gospel of Christ. Being an evangelistic Christian, that didn't come hard for me. I mean, I was ready. I had my New Testament. I went door to door, cold turkey. Hey, man, have you heard about Jesus Christ? No, can I tell him about it? Can I tell you about it? I mean, that was my first week of being a believer. But my prayer life has always had a struggle to it because, you know what? I always thought prayer was a certain thing, and it really wasn't. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. This is, the, this is what I believe. I believe that a lot of folks don't have the prayer life that God wants them to have because I believe they have a misconception. The first misconception I believe people have when it comes to praying is this, that they, they, they don't know how. They just don't know how to pray. They go, well, do I pray too long? Am I praying long enough? Am I praying too loud? Am I praying the right way? Am I saying the right words? You know, they, I think they have a lot of times have a, have a problem with, with prayer because they just don't get what, what, what prayer is for them. You know, number two, I believe, number two, that one of the biggest problems that people have with prayer is the fact that this is they get bored or distracted really easily. Now, I'm one of these guys like that. I, I, I talked to the early service, which if they say that, you, they, that they're my favorite service, they're lying to you guys. I've never said that. I said, I told them, I said, I can't wait till the, the late service because they're my favorite service because they have spent all morning getting charged up and ready to go. And they're ready for this, this search, you know. But the thing is, is, is I get distracted really easy. And I was telling the story. How many of you have ever seen the movie Up? Really cool movie. Remember the little dog? Uh, I don't remember his name. What was the dog? Huh? Doug the dog. He, what was his favorite thing? Squirrel. He was really distracted real easy. That's me and when it comes to praying. I'll be down on my knees or I'll be in my office praying. And I'll think. And I'll be getting into the prayer. And I'll think, oh my goodness, that's any photo. You know? Or I'll be praying along and I'll go, oh, well, I need to do this. And I'll forget and I'll be on to that. And, and I, I'm one of these ADD prayers. I, I, I pray and then all of a sudden I got attention to the deficit disorder and I, I'm on to, to chasing squirrels. Number three, I believe a lot of us think that our requests are too small. God's, you know, how many of you woke up like 3 o'clock this morning wondering if the planet is still spinning? You know? Or did you? I felt a shift in the speed. Maybe slow down a little. 
or worried about meteoriteness and you know like the size of Texas or whatever. No, you don't worry about that stuff. You don't even concern yourself about the planet's speed, the direction, the timing from the sun, all that stuff. You don't concern yourself with any of that. And then so what it goes to is your mind is you think, well, since God's spinning the earth, he really doesn't have time for my needs. He really doesn't have time for mine. But you know what? God is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's ever present. He is concerned with everything that you're dealing with. He is. Number four, I think well, some of us pray because we have really asked the question, does it make any difference? You know, you're thinking of you're, you think it out loud in yourself, you say, man, God's doing his thing, and it's going to happen no matter what I do. Regardless of how I pray, regardless of what I say, God's going to do what he's going to do, and it really makes no difference. So a lot of times I think we don't pray because, first of all, we don't know how, second of all, we're just so distracted. And then number three, I think we think it's too small. And then a lot of times I think we just think it doesn't make any difference. But let me ask you a question. Here's the deal. What is the definition of prayer? What is praying really anyway? I mean, we have prayer books. We have books on prayer. But honestly, what is prayer? It is absolutely nothing more than this simple thing. Communicating with God. Now, that communication is two ways. It's listening to God and it's speaking to God. It's an interaction. When you break it down to it, honestly, prayer is very similar to connecting with other people, except in this case, you're connecting with God. It's the same as a vertical relationship, it's the same as a horizontal relationship. It takes listening. It takes understanding. It takes love. It takes all those things. Love is basically listening, understanding, and validating. And it's just that's why you keep a vertical horizontal relationship going. Well, it's the same thing when you got a vertical relationship. Communicating with God is simply what prayer is. Prayer is nothing more than communicating with God. Now, if you want to sit down there and dissect that for a second, listen to this. You're talking about the God. Who said, let there be light, and there was. You're talking about the God who is spinning this planet at however many millions of miles an hour, thousands of miles an hour that it's spinning. And he's holding that thing in his hand. And it's rotating around the sun at a speed of uh, unbelievable speed. In order to keep us warm and not, uh, not too worried about warm right now, but uh, cool. Uh, you know, we're, not, we, 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 we're a little more concerned about the cool. But the thing about this is God's keeping that earth spinning. And you're asking yourself, how awesome is it that we can come boldly before the throne of God, the throne of grace, when we're in need, when we're in time of pain, when we're suffering, when we're hurting, we can come before, the, for, before God and communicate to Him. You know, it's still hard for me. I, can, and it, I, hope it, I mean, I think it's got to be hard for you. It's hard for me to imagine the fact that I can sit down and have this time, this moment with the creator of the universe. And I'm going to give you a scripture, and you can find this in Psalm chapter 5, or you can look in your outline. You have it in your outline as well. But Psalm chapter 5, verse 1, you know, our prayer doesn't have to look like everybody else's, guys. Our prayer doesn't have to, I hope that, I hope that as we study today, I hope that you can break out of some of the barriers that you think you may have to have an Our Father, or you may have to have a, a certain prayer life that, that you, you've been, you know, maybe taught. But let's look at what the Bible teaches about what prayer is and how we can come to God in prayer. I want you to break out some way of your prayer box, you might say. I want you to kind of get outside of the prayer box and understand that it's simply communicating to God. And I want us to look at this scripture and hopefully you can even learn to communicate in a, what I would call a creative way. Look at what David says. Pray, pray. In other words, pray in verse 1 here. Give ears to my words, O Lord. Listen to this. And then he says, consider my sign. Man, I thought, you know, as I read that, that's impossible. In, in, in the English standard translation, or the English standard version, which is the ESV, it says groan. Consider my sign. Groaning. You know, when my wife sits next to me, there's a time that sometimes she'll she'll just sit down next to me and she'll go. 
And that communicates. And I don't know what it's communicating. Unless I know, unless I've engaged her in some way, she may be sitting down going, man, you're just a jerk. Who says that? You know? She may be just going, you know what? I, and I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to do a little do a little footwork. Now God knows where I have a sign. When God considers my sign and my groaning, and He knows why. Now then there, there's times though that my wife will come in there and, and she'll she'll like sit down beside me and she'll go, <sighs> that's a whole different sigh altogether. Now she's not now she's thinking, oh man, my protector, my knight in shining armor. Thank you. For, you know, like uh, I was telling the story to the early group. Uh, Monday, Terry, she works at, she teaches ballet. And so she comes home Monday night and, and I cooked uh, uh, what we call Southern Clubs. And it's chicken sandwich it's about this thick with pro. I mean, you sometimes we'll put mozzarella or we'll put provolone cheese on it and then fry up some bacon. And you can put a little bacon on there and lettuce and tomato and mayo. And, and these things are about, you know, this is yay tall after you get done. It's, it's a gorgeous sight, and and, and it's even look, I know close to lunch, but uh, you guys have already eaten and come here, so you're good. But uh, then I did like that's cool and all, but she could smell the aroma of homemade onion rings. Man, I I would had battered and fried homemade onion rings. I had a stack in a bowl about this tall, and when she comes home, she goes. <sighs> See, that's a different type of side altogether. See, what I want you to get from this is, is God wants us to have an intimate relationship at the point where I can side. I, can, I feel so comfortable with God that I can just decide and understand that He's listening to me. Verse 2, I love where He goes on to verse 2. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. He's acknowledging that this isn't just some God. I'm going to tell you something, guys. God will go wherever you want to go. God's a kick in it kind of God. If you want to push the envelope when it comes to rebellion, you'll go. You just will. Trust me, I've been there. If you want to go with God to a higher level of intimacy and knowing Him, He'll go with you. He's not this impersonal, distracted, cutaway image upon a wall. He is a loving, caring, understanding, but also purposeful God. And I love how David's relating him. He's not just saying you're just some distant piece of iron or distant piece of gold or image on a wall. No, you are my king and my God. This is an intimacy that he's sharing here. I want you to just stop and think about how life changing. Hear my voice. God hears your voice. He hears it in the morning. I lay my request before you. And, and what do I do? I wait in expectation. You, you wait for what God's going to do. You're, God's going to do something in your life. And God is going to continually do something in your life. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to just tell you. I've been I walked down the aisle of a Baptist church at 10 years old. I got baptized. I did the religious thing. Made my mom extremely happy. All the other kids in church knew I was in the club. I was everybody's happy. When I hit about 20, 21 years old, I did anything I wanted. I was in the Navy. I use language that would make a, make a Marine blush. I treated people any way I wanted to treat them. I had a, I had a relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship, and I did anything I wanted any time I wanted. Then 
In reality, at 24 years of age, I met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And He shut me down. I'm talking down to China. And I'm going to tell you, you know how I know that I'm a child of Jesus Christ, a king, a child of the Lord of God? I step out here again, and I get my pipe tanned. Not in days, not in months or weeks, in moments. Because He is my God, and He is my King. I have this relationship where when I step out, I would be I would be scared, knowing what I know now, I would be scared to death that if I stepped out here and, and, and he just didn't do anything. I could do anything I want. Because then I know my my soul is destined for eternal judgment. Because I know I'm not a believer now. I know I'm not a follower. Because followers of his, kids of his, get disciplined. My child. You step out of the, at the fifth home, what happens? You get your high tan. Now you're not at your age now. We take away things at his age. But back in the day, right? Because what? Do we hate you? Why do we do that? Because you belong to us and we love you, right? That's that relationship. See, it's a child, father, it's a kid, to dad, it's a God, to, to, to a follower, it's a king. So, we are in that relationship. If David finds security in that relationship, do I find security? You better believe I find security in that relationship. I know you're faithful to respond to my prayers, consider my signs, give ears to my prayers, O oh Lord. I'm leaning into you, and you're giving it this to, to you know, you're giving this to you. I'll wait, I'll wait on God, and I know you're going to do what you're going to do, and I've got expectation of waiting on this. This is not, guys, how I grew up praying. I'm just telling you. I'm learning so much from David's prayer here. I hope you are. David gives us an expression to his father that changes our mentality about how we should pray. He's giving us permission to reconcile, uh, re to, to basically recognize that prayer is not some cold, meaningless getting on my knees and, and reciting something. He's giving us an opportunity to express ourselves in such a way with God that, it's, that it means who we are. Maybe you like to sing. Sing your prayers. Sing them out loud. I was going to go on with that, but uh, if you know the old 70s song. But uh, sing, sing a song. No, sing a prayer. Maybe you need to write it down. Maybe, you know, I, I, I got an app on my iPad called I Do, and it's my journaling app, and I'll sit there with I Do, and I'll journal to God my prayers. I'll journal them. Some of you may need to, you, you know, you, you sing, some people may need to, 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 to write it down, some of you might need to even email them to them. I don't know, just come up with a phony email, to God.com, whatever, I don't know. But you need to express yourself in, into God and communicate to Him. Now, I'm going to give you, so what do you communicate? Now, first communication, what do I communicate? Well, I want you to, here's the first thing that we're, if you're taking notes, I want you to understand that if you're going to talk to God, it needs to be with a gut level of honesty. It needs to be honest. You, 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 you know, you need to be honest with him. You need to say, man, I'm hurting. God, I'm hurting. You, mean, you may need to say, you know, God, I need this job. You need, to, you need to say, man, God, I'm, 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 I'm living outside the parameters that you call me to live, and I know I'm being disobedient. You know, show me the right path. You know, I'll go to lunch sometimes, and, 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 and then sometimes I'll get preachers most of the time, and, and, and I'll go to lunch with them, and they'll be like, hey, let's get it on this. And then we'll be talking, and all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and we'll go, well, let's pray. And so we'll grab hands, or, you know, we'll be at lunch or something, and they say, let's pray for the food. And then all of a sudden, you hear this voice. Oh, Father, God of the universe, creator above all, and I'm sitting there going, wow, okay, that's a different, different tone. <laughs> you know, you, you can't, you know, God's not going to get, like, something out of it when we automatically kind of shift gear and go into this prayer mode. You know, you, 
God's going, boy, that's just, that's kind of fake. It's just honestly fake. I don't need a prayer mode. I need, the only mode of prayer I need is just to talk to Him with gut level honesty and be who I am. Be authentic. You know, how would it, I mean, how would it be if your child walked home and said, and, you know, maybe your mom or dad, maybe your child goes, Mother, <laughs> give her a life. <laughs> from thy womb I have come, from thy breast I have suckled. <laughs> Hear this word from your child. <laughs> You'd be going, what? <laughs> what is going on? Why do we want to think that we can approach God that way? Father God, is that way? all of our, you know. No, I mean, just say, hey, God, I, I'm just hurting. I'm struggling. It's hot in here. <laughs> hey, Daddy, I, I, you know, my kids come to me and, hey, Daddy, let's play. Hey, Daddy, give me a kiss. Hey, Daddy, give me a hug. Hey, Daddy, can I go outside and play? Hey, Dad, you know, it's not, it's, it's just, it doesn't have any pretense to it. It just has a relationship. It's gut level honest. You, you know, do you know Jesus condemned? Uh, let me just, let me, let me, first of all, let me go back here. We don't see pretense and we don't see um, this from Moses in Exodus chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. He says, look what he says in Exodus 22, uh, Exodus 25, 22 and 23. Oh Lord, why have you brought trouble upon this people? Is that why you sent me? Well, that's pretty honest, isn't it? I mean, he's, he's, he's asking God. I'm confused. I don't get it. When I was at the burning bush, I had these aspirations and dreams of people being set free. But when I come to Pharaoh, ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak your name, he has brought trouble upon his people, and you have not rescued your people at all. Boy, you know, you always want to be reverent. You always want to be worshipful. You always want to be submissive to him. But there are times when you can just say, yeah, I don't get it. And we're going to two services. The air conditioner breaks. It's threatening rain all day. You know, half the people that were supposed to be here are gone because they're whatever. I don't get it. But God says, you're doing what I told you to do anyway. This is about, this is about obedience. Did you know Jesus only, only condemned two people? They're, he, the two things he criticized about people's prayer are this. They're too lengthy. And show, and you know, for show purposes only. And they're too lengthy, and they're inauthentic. No, he, 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 just, he just says, you know what? They're just a bunch of show. It doesn't mean anything. If you're here at church and it's just about a show for you, I wouldn't even come. I'm honest with you, I'd be out on the river. Why? He, he look what he says in Matthew 6 5 and 7. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. For they love the Lord standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. They were more concerned about what people would think than what God thinks. And look what he says here. He says, when you pray, don't keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. See, prayer doesn't have to, you know, have to be unnecessarily long, and it sure doesn't have to be perfect and fancy before God. Just like, you know, just talk to God with a gut level of honesty. And I guarantee you, most of you who raise your hands and you know my prayer life could improve, I guarantee you, when you do those two things, be gut level of honest with Him, and say what needs to be said, and just talk, I guarantee you, your prayer life will reach an intimacy that you had never experienced before. Second thing, if you're taking notes, here's what you need to learn to do, is you need to talk to God about everything that matters to you. Everything. There's no small concern for God. Look what it says in Philippians 4 6. Don't be anxious about anything, but in what? Everything. Everything. There's no medium things, small things, large things. There's only things. In everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, do what? Present your request to who? God. Talk about it with you. Everything is important to you. Talk about it with God. You know, talk about it with God. If your child came up to you and said, Hey, Daddy, I need to talk to you. What are you going to do? You're going to listen to them. 
Well, sit down there, son. Yes, let's talk. If it's important to him or her, it's important to you. God looks at you like his children, and if it's important to you, then it's important to me, him. God's like, if it's important to you, it's important to him. Numerous times in the scripture we have examples. Zacharias wanted his son, John the Baptist. He said, God, please give us a son. And guess what? God granted that, even when they were so old. Solomon asked God for wisdom. And guess what? We got the Proverbs. We even have Ecclesiastes. A lot of wisdom there, too. Moses and Samson asked, both asked God for water in a time when there was no water, and God granted them water. Daniel had a weird dream, and he didn't know what it meant. He asked God for help to understand what the dream meant, and God granted it. Gideon felt called by an angel of the Lord to do something. And you know what? He goes, I need a sign. And God said, there's a sign. And he goes, well, I need a sign again. And boom, there was another one. Abraham, who had a servant, and wanted what? You know what Abraham's servant? He had, he wanted to find Isaac. Uh, oh my God. But guess what he really wanted to be? Successful. He wanted to get paid good. He wanted to be successful. He wanted to be, in Abraham's eyes, the best servant ever. And he said, God, help me to find favor and find a wife for Isaac. God, grant me success today as I go on my journey. David prayed for forgiveness and received it. Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain and it stopped. Then Elijah turned around and prayed that it would rain and it started. Paul prayed for something that was bothering him. Here's a good one. Paul prayed a prayer asking God to take away something. And guess what God said? No. No, sir. My grace is sufficient for you. So then Paul said, well, therefore, if, I, if your grace is sufficient for me, and then you're strong when I'm weak, then I'll just soon be weak. Then God can be strong in your life. The disciples prayed for boldness, and Jesus prayed for unity for his disciples. What matters to you? Pray about it. You know, maybe you're dealing with headaches, or maybe you're dealing with, with, uh, with an addiction, or maybe you're dealing with, with uh, you know, your feet hurt at the end of a 10 hour work day. <laughs> maybe you're dealing with a, a wayward child. Maybe you're dealing with, with issues at home. Maybe you're dealing with finances. I don't care. Whatever that struggle is. Maybe your child is struggling in the second grade and they're not making good grades. I don't care what it is. Pray for it. Maybe you're concerned about the economy. Maybe you're concerned that I'm going to go along. Pray for it, man. This is stuff that you need to be praying about. Number three. Not only do you need to be gut level honest, not only do you need to go with it with everything that matters to you, but you also need to pray continually. And like I told you guys before, this is one of the things that really set my prayer life on, on, on overdrive. Is I learned that I didn't have to spend just that first hour or two a day uh, in prayer. I learned that I could pray all day long, every single day. That my prayer time didn't have to be that first 15 or 20 minutes in the morning where I'm distracted or whatever. That I can, you know what I'll do is I wake up in the morning, I start out, I open up, a, I turn my phone on, and I and I read I read a chapter or two in the scripture, and then I'll pray. Nothing long, nothing quick. I hit the, hit the, when I hit the feet on the floor, I'm gone. And then throughout the day, I will have times where I'm praying at, and just communicating with God all the single day. And then the last thing I do at night before I unplug is I go to sleep praying to God. I'm just like, thank you, God, for the day. Thank you, God, for the my life. All that stuff. Go to God all day long. Look what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. Be joyful always and to pray. How? Pray continually. Without ceasing. Without ceasing is the King James Version prison. To pray continually, giving thanks to God in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray continually. I believe this has been the number one biggest effect on my prayer life. And, and you know what? I believe that this has changed my life. Because I, I learned how to just pray continually. And as you engage God in the next 40 days, and then hopefully beyond, I hope that you will learn that it doesn't have to just be this moment. I want you to write down these initials, or maybe already in your outlines, Pug. 
Hope up means pray until God answers. You pray continuously throughout the day, but you also pray continuously through whatever you're dealing with. If that relationship isn't fixed immediately, don't stop praying. Pray until God answers. Pray until God answers. If that, if that job has to come in the first week, pray until God answers. If, if, if this, you know, if whatever, until God answers whatever your prayer you're praying for. Maybe He'll say yes. Maybe He'll say no. Maybe He says wait. But pray until God answers. In, in, in Batterson's book, you're going to see this. He's going to talk about praying until God answers. You can also, some people use push. Pay, pray until something happens. I recommend, I like to pray until God answers. Because I'm waiting to hear, not just to see a circumstance, but sometimes that's it. But I'm waiting to hear from my Lord. I'm hearing, waiting to hear from my Master. God, you know, just, you know, Hannah did this. She would go and she would pray, God, send me a son. God, send me a son. God, send me a son. And she was in a continual state of prayer and God answered her prayer. She kept praying until God answered it. So keep continually praying. So talk to God about whatever matters to you. Stay God level honest with Him. But this is the last thing I want to point out to you. But listen for His response. Don't just keep talking. What if, you know, Charity comes out and she goes, I go, hey, Charity, fix me a hand sandwich. Hey, Charity, fix me a coat. Hey, Charity, fix me smart. Hey, Charity, did you make a bed? Hey, Charity, did you do the laundry? Hey, Charity, did you do this for me? Hey, Charity, did you do that for me? And then I go, hey, Charity, did you switch your smoochie? And she goes, no. <laughs> no. All I've heard from you is you, 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 you. See, that's the way we kind of pray. Go on, take care of this. Go on, take care of that. Go on, over here. Go on, over there. Go on, go on, go on, go on. And God's like, oh, dude, just stop. And listen. You know, it, God wants to speak to us as well. God wants us to hear Him. You know, when Elijah wanted to hear from God, and God was going to wanted to speak to Elijah, He didn't come in the in the rushing, powerful wind. Since there was a rushing wind and it blew through the mountains and it shattered the rocks, but what? God was not in the wind. Then a huge earthquake happened, and most of the people would have said, well, that's God. And God was not in the earthquake. Then he sent a blazing fire. He's done this before. Blazing fire was one of God's pre, you know, he's used that. But God was not in the fire. Where and when did God reveal himself? 1 Kings 19.12, it says, after the fire came what? There was a gentle whisper. God spoke in a gentle whisper. God may speak to you when you're in prayer. He may speak to you when you open up His Word. He may speak to you when you're searching through there for truth. He may speak to you through people. Man, I've had people come to my life, and especially in my wife, and God has spoken through what they said. God may speak through the circumstances that you're in, When you have eyes to see what he's saying and how he's directing, God may even speak to you in a tone that your heart can reach. I was laying in bed on a Saturday morning. And I told some of you guys this last week when we talked about the vision of this church. I was laying in bed on a Saturday morning and God said to me, when I get ready to move, move with me because we're gonna, I'm going to do something big. And that was what he said to Mark. When I say we're going to move, move with me because we're going to do, I'm going to do something big. And that's what he said to Mark. By the end of that day, some of you know the story. Billy Mitchell showed up at my house and said, hey, listen, this isn't my gig. I'm ready to merge churches. If you want to merge with me? And I'm like, yes, because God told me this morning already. This is what he wants to do. I was ready before the man walked through the door. He says, coincidence. Really? I don't think so. I think it was God moving and wanted me to get next to him because he was getting ready to do something big. And he has been doing that ever since. God has been speaking. God has been guiding. God has been leading. 
communicating with him. Listen to that. I'm going to ask you this question. Twelve years ago, God told me, or it was all twelve years, it was thirteen years ago, God told me to plant a church in South Florida, and I'm here. Let me ask you a question. In thirteen years, where are you going to be? What's God going to tell you to do? Where are you going to be? Are you willing to listen to a word that He's going to say to you that 12 years, 13 years from now, he is going, you're going to be still doing what He told you to do? I want to ask you this. You know, it, 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 I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to think about the fact that Jesus said this. He says, the sheep, what do they do? They know my voice. I walk up outside. I did this yesterday just for games. I may have been the day before. Nobody was home with me, and I drove up, and, and I start making noise outside. And guess what I can hear inside the house? Shell. <clears throat> I said, she heard my voice. She knows I'm here. I can't. I got to go let her out now. I just going to let her out anyway. It wasn't like this a torture thing. I was really going to let her out. I just wanted to see how it took her to hear me. You know, jingle the car, pull up, and she's like, oh, you know. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. They hear it and they know it. Guys, I want us to be those kind of sheep. I want us to be the sheep that hear God's voice and we do it. We obey it. We follow it. Let's go back to this. Listen to this. Oh God, listen to my cry, hear my prayer, consider my sighing or my groaning. In the morning I pray to you, I give you my request to you, I will wait in expectation. God, because you revealed yourself before, I cast all my anxiety on you because you care for me. I, God, I want to. I want to know you through prayer and I want to hear your voice. Let's pray. God, I'm speaking right now. Just God, as, 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 as people are listening and their hearts go, I pray that you would just reveal to them that, that you want to, to speak to their heart. That you want to guide them in life. Maybe they've been living so far outside the box, God, that they're just there in trouble. Maybe God, they've been living so far outside of the realm that they don't even hear your voice anymore. Maybe they don't even hear your voice because they don't know you. God, I'm praying. I pray for those right now, God, that are here. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Christ. Every day that I God loves I want to ask this question. Maybe you don't know Jesus. for salvation. This moment. I'm going to tell you that, you know, I can talk about the judgment or I can talk about that stuff, but you know what? That's just not what God's laying on my heart. What are you missing out on because you don't know Jesus? That's the question. What relationship are you missing out on because Christ is not the center of your life? What are your kids suffering because of that? What's your spouse suffering because of that? What are you missing out on? And I look back over the last 24 years of my life, and I thank God for every single moment of, of, that He revealed Himself to me and showed me the need that I had for Him, the need that I had for Him, the emptiness that I was suffering for Him, that I, God, that, that I needed that relationship. All I can tell you is, seek Him. As you would be seeking gold, as precious rubies, as, as that next pleasure or thrill. Seek Him. If you're here this morning, I challenge you this prayer, this 40 day prayer challenge. Pray, pray, pray. Read His Word fast. Let God speak to your heart like only He can. And I ask it in Jesus. Powerful and precious name. Amen. Amen. Church, let's stand.
is the adventure.